Well, g'day guys. Um, this is a video on choline, which I've been promising for some time. So about the time I delivered. Um, it's it's we're going to look at uh, basically uh, what it does, primarily in rega in relation to fatty liver, and uh, and I'll be basically putting forward an argument that um, fatty liver is basically a choline deficiency and nothing more than that and if you're consuming a diet which isn't a specific a species appropriate diet um, you're more likely to have a level a certain level of deficiency in choline um, the standard american diet is very deficient in choline but so are vegetarian and vegan diets um, which to differ which to differing degrees, vegetarianism is as, isn't as bad. It still includes some animal products, but there are variations between vegetarians the way they practice. Um, uh, you know the the inclusion of certain um, uh, animal foods like eggs, um, dairy, and fish. Um, so they do vary um, uh, between different parts of the world and. Um, and so there are variations in the consequences of um, having a, you know, basically a diet that's that's low in choline. So let's get on with it. Um, I'll just show you the snip that I've been talking about for some time now. Just give me a sec. Get this going. Let's just show you the actual snip. Turn that off. That is the actual snip. And so it's single nuclear nuclear type polymorphism, and uh, these are the consequences. So basically, I'll just read this part out. Caucasians with a non-alcoholic fatty liver are more likely to carry the RS7946 with T allele, um, with the effect being most pronounced for those with a TT, the genotype. So, so if your alleles, you know, if you've got two, you're going to be in a slightly worse case so to speak and uh, um, in terms of uh, the potential to be at risk for fatty liver so there are differences between different ethnic groups and they would have to do with the sort of diets that people had over a number of generations and how you know the changes have happened in terms of choline metabolism um, and endogenous production so there are differences um, between different populations and so we'll just take a look at this part so as you can actually see this is northern Europeans um, so these are populations in North America that have been identified from that have originating from different parts of the world um, this is a US site so um, it's identifying populations within the the North American continent so if you look at Northern Europeans in terms of we'll just go back up here okay so remember T so as you can see the people with um, the worst case of this sort of uh, uh, genetic predisposition is about 55.8 percent you know it's over 50 percent let's just you know there are going to be variations but be, um, between people from northern European to some extent so just it's over 50 percent that have got the worst situation about nearly 40 percent 35 percent you know on average 
that um, that are at some risk and then it's only about seven percent now on on average when you actually look I've actually said in the past it's nine percent now there is other, other data that I've looked at so it, the number does vary and I've sort of roughly averaged it out to about um, nine percent but you know that's a rough thing it's less than 10 percent basically of the northern European population or people with that sort of ancestry that um, uh, tend to have um, this SNP that really puts them at greater risk for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease so that's something to take into consideration that these people are more dependent on getting exogenous choline in their diet from different animal sources this is another reason why we we see amongst vegans and vegetarians and people um, of European descent far greater levels of homocysteine and inflammation when you know they're consuming of uh, a diet that's um, low in choline generally speaking um, there you've got the Han Chinese nearly 76 percent so they are you know an outlier because of those you know just the luck of the dice you know that uh, that in their world um, uh, there was a time when animal nutrition was um, had low availability over a number of generations they ended up you know becoming you know having less of that nutrition becoming shorter plus at the same time um, upregulating the capacity to basically for endogenous production of choline so to mitigate the deleterious effects of lack of it and there are quite a few deleterious effects when you don't get enough choline in your diet and we'll go into those later on so you look at the Japanese Japanese are about 50% so they they have a pretty high level as well um, not as high as the Chinese but you know and that's another reason for you know that when we look at Okinawans and when we look at basically Chinese um, Japanese populations we need to take this into consideration these populations had um, you know an emperor that basically banned a lot of animal products for a number of generations and you know and this you know had an effect on you know genetic changes in that population so these are these are factors we need to take into consideration so you know we look at certain people with African ancestry as well um, other Chinese from other areas because these are from a number of different areas the number is slightly lower than the than this it's more pronounced in Hun Chinese but obviously even in other Chinese um, there is you know in the general Chinese Cantonese you know in the south and many others around the place um, it's still relatively high so even data out of Hong Kong and other areas we need to basically be you know very careful the way we interpret a lot of that data um, the veg tarts jump on on any sort of data of that sort which shows people consuming more plants and having not exhibiting very high homocysteine levels and they use that they use that, that information to go to turn around and go look look at this you know look at look at that group um, uh, to sort of argue their point but in reality they ignore the genetics um, side of things um, you know and when you look at when it comes to the Italians the level drops to about 12.7 so in the in the south it's about 12 so if you consider Greeks Spaniards and other people in the Mediterranean or in that area it's much lower um, it's not as low as um, people in um, sort of the north um, of Europe in particular um, and I've seen some information also in Central Asia and populations of that sort as well that consumed a lot of animal products um, you know pastoral type background and all that very similar to the European genes very pastoral 
so tend to have this snip um, slightly down regulated so they are more vulnerable to choline deficiencies compared to you know to other population groups so that's that's an important thing to sort of um, keep an eye on that factor 